Hiya, Paul. Hiya. Hey, what's today's programme about? Oh, today's programme's all about do it yourself. Great! <laughs> D-I-M. Why? Do it myself. No, why? I've just told you. No, not why. Why? Oh. No, not oh, why? Look, we are doing a programme on do it yourself. Oh, well, it must be D-I-O then. Do it ourselves. Oh, look. Just go and get the stuff. Do it yourself. How's it going? Great. I've got it furnished exactly the same as my room at home. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, it'll have to do, I suppose. There's something not quite right, though. Hey. Something missing. I can't quite put my finger on... Hey, I've got it. Have you? Get me a hammer and nail, quick. Hammer and nail? Yes. That should do the job nicely. Hammer and nail? That's the one. Right. When I nod my head, you hit it. Hey. Oh, come here. I'll do it myself. All right. <laughs> that should do it. Let's have a look. Perfect. Right, we're ready. Hello again. Today's programme is all about DIY and home improvements. I'm going to show you how to transform a mess like this into a room you'll be proud to bring your friends home to. Now, the first thing we will need is a paper. Paper? Oh, paper to hang on the walls. Next, a brush. A brush. To paint the paintwork. And finally, we'll need some paste. Fish paste or meat paste? Paste to hang the paper up. Oh. And where better get them than your local DIY store? Come on. Hey, can I come? Of course you can. Gonna need somebody to push the trolley, aren't we? Great. <laughs> you can usually find a place like this on your doorstep. I usually find milk bottles on my doorstep. You should be able to get everything you need in here. Good. Go get a trolley. Oh, OK. Well, it's going to take us quite a while to get back to the studio with this little knot, so why not settle back and watch Armchair Theatre? Great! Not you, come on. Stan Todd was a builder. If he had tile or timber trouble, pipes or patio problems, or had dodgy drains and drips, Stan was your man. And talking of drips, Stan worked with an assistant called Baz. Got ourselves a job today, Baz, said Stan, at Mrs. Philhomina Halls, 26 Arcacia Road. So off they went. You know, Baz, said Stan, as they pulled up outside Mrs. Philhomina Hall's house. I reckon this is a most pleasant street. Yeah, said Baz. He was a lad of few words. I mean, all the houses look comfortable with each other. Yeah, 
said Baz. Well, jump out then. And Baz jumped through the passenger window, feet first. Mrs Philomena Hall opened the door. She was dressed in silver high heel shoes and a pink tracksuit. She wore lots of gold jewellery which jangled noisily. Her hair was like a blonde Brillo pad. Stay on the path, <laughs> she sniffed. I can't possibly have you tradespeople making my doorstep dirty with your trainees. I'll fetch some plastic bags to put over your feet. So Baz looked at Stan, and Stan looked back as if to say, well, a job's a job. Mrs Philomena Hall tied plastic bags over Stan and Baz's trainers and pointed to the front of her house. One can see the problem, she said. Possibly one can, reasoned Stan, but I can't. The house, it's just like all the others. Ah, said Stan. For a starter, I'd like a different door. Something like, um... Something like this. This style rather takes my fancy. But that's the door of the ballroom at Buckingham Palace, said Stan. And I want a clock like this on the chimney. She was brandishing a photograph of Big Ben. Replacement window is in this style and an engraved sign bearing the new name of the property. New name. Hall Hall, stately home. Well, what do you think? I think, said Stan, that Baz and I will go and discuss this over a flask of tea. Over his tea, Stan thought hard. It's no good, Baz. I can't go through with it. If I put up all the doors and the clocks and the windows and signs that she wants, I'll spoil the whole street. These houses look comfortable with each other, don't they, Baz? Yeah, said Baz. Mrs Philomena Hall must be taught the folly of her ways. And I think I know exactly how it can be done. So you'll do the job, inquired Mrs Philomena Hall. We can start this afternoon, said Stan. Two o'clock. As Stan and Baz were putting up the sign saying, Hall Hall, stately home, Mrs Philomena Hall came out. Her shopping bag firmly by her side, her feet firmly on the ground, and her nose firmly in the air. I shall be returning shortly, she said. Baz and Stan watched her disappear up Arcacia Road. Now, said Stan, and they rushed to the phone box on the corner. Ten minutes later, there came a sound, like a crocodile chewing a set of spanners. That, said Stan, listening intently, can only be one thing, the Canal Street school bus. Canal Street school bus drew up outside Hall Hall, and Miss Gimlet, who was Class 4's teacher, got down and gave Stan a large smile. Welcome, said Stan, to Hall Hall. I'm sure Class 4 will find looking around Hall Hall a most instructive lesson in history. Class 4 had visited stately homes before and knew exactly what to do. They swarmed down the cellar in search of the gruesome dungeons. They stuck their heads up the chimney to see if there was a roasting spit. Inspected the taps to see if they were gold-plated. It was while they were all running their sticky hands over the velvet cushions that Mrs Philomena Hall came home. Ah! Was all she said at first. Then, get them out of here! Ooh. I thought, explained Stan instantly, that being that it was a stately home, you'd be pleased. I mean, all stately homes are open to the public. Mrs. Philomena Hall thought, and thought again. I don't think I can stand all these people tramping about my house. I mean, some of them wouldn't be wearing plastic bags over their shoes, would they? If you like, I could cancel the order for the Buckingham Palace doors, the Big Ben chimney clocks, and the cathedral windows. Instead, we could clean up the brickwork, repair the woodwork, and give a fresh coat of paint to the guttering. I think then your house will look even more comfortable with all the others because it really is a most pleasant street. Perhaps, said Mrs Philomena Hall reluctantly, perhaps you're right. We'll start in the morning then. Yes, said Stan, go to the van with Baz. That was a job well done. Then he dropped Baz off at his house and went home to change into his best jacket. 
because as a thank you, he'd arrange to pick up Miss Gimlet from Canal Street School and take her out for a swanky fish supper. Yes. Oh, oh dear. Let's see. Up like that. Yes. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Oh dear. There must be a better way than that. Now, if it stands there like that. Oh, his little legs here. That up there. That there. Don't think. Will it? Will it go? Yeah. Yes. How done it? Oh! The first thing any professional DIYer needs is a nice, solid, substantial table on which to do his work. Now look what you've done. Me? Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, forget it now. Where have you been? Oh, Leeds. Leeds? Well, it's not my fault. I couldn't steer the trolley. Oh, it's all over. Well, where's the, the trolley now? Huddersfield. Huddersfield? I came back on the bus. Oh, well, where's the stuff? Well, that's okay. I've got that outside. Oh, you better bring it in because I need the paste. Well, I've got the paste here. Oh, good. Hey, you're going to need your wellies. Your wellies? Yeah, because look, it says here. Mix the paste thoroughly, then stand in bucket for half an hour. Ooh, how can you be so stupid? How are you so stupid? I get up early in the morning. You must do. You don't need your wellies for that. Don't you? No, not if you don't put water in the bucket. He knows. Yes. <laughs> hey, what can I do now? Um, use your head and stir the paint. Can't you use a stick like a proper painter would? Oh, forget it. Just put that table up, will you? OK. Yes. Now, uh, this is a very messy job, is wallpapering, so there's one more thing a sensible do-it-yourself man needs. I know what that is. What? An overall. No, a telephone. A telephone? Yeah. What's that for? Well, to get an expert to come in. <laughs> I thought you said it was do-it-yourself. So? Well, it can't be for getting someone in to do it for you. Ah, but he'll be doing it himself, won't he? Oh, I see. D-I-A. Yes. Do it himself. Yes. Yes. Anyway, I've got something else I want to show the viewers. Oh, can I come? Uh, when you've set that table up, yes. OK. That's it. Great. I'm coming to... No. Hey, what's that? Oh, this is my new cordless telephone. Is it? Yeah. Do you know, everybody's got these nowadays. Have they? With this little marvel, you can talk to somebody 600 feet away. Is that all? Yeah. Well, I talked to my mother on the phone and she's 10 miles away. Who was it you were talking to? Oh, it was the painter. Oh, is he going to come and do it? He's not going to do it. He wanted an arm and a leg. Oh, well, I can give you a hand. Hey? With the decorating. Oh. I'm very handy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I only live around the corner. Oh, well, you've got the job, then. Great. <sighs> right. Patio doors. Patio? Not who. Oh. You see, in these days of high-energy bills and living in a noisy environment, it is important that correct insulation from cold and sound is achieved. Yes. <laughs> this is the very latest in sealed glazing units, designed, of course, by myself, and incorporating the brand new top secret chuckle glass. Yes. Mm. It makes a substantial contribution to a cosy, noise-free lifestyle. Great. A demonstration. Get through here. Through there. Right. Right. Now, as you can see, no drafts here. No. But what about the feather test? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll agree that completely proves my point. And don't forget our famous money-back guarantee. We guarantee you won't get your money back. Uh, yes, uh, another special feature of chuckle glasses that you need never worry if you lock yourself out. And you'll be pleased to know that you can buy it in your shops tomorrow. Hey, what about the burglars? Oh, yeah, they can buy it as well. Oh. And now for another special on-site report. <laughs> One thing to think about when you're working on the outside of your house is the state of your brickwork. They need pointing. This is a most important point. And here's a couple we did earlier. How's that? Hey, they're very sharp, aren't they? They are, aren't they? Oh! Now, the next thing we... <laughs> Which brings us to our next item. Glass replacement by our very own glazing expert, Simon Lovell. Well, of course, before you can glaze a house, you need a house to glaze. And I thought today we'd start off by making a special little magic house for Barry. We need an empty tube, and then all the ingredients for a magic house, such as a few nails, and a little bit of sawdust as our ingredients. A little chuckle vision snap over the top, and there, believe it or not, we have a little magic house from our tube. And now, 
onto the glazing. As you saw earlier on, we had the chuckle glass in the patio doors. Now, the major problem with it, as one of its designers, is that it was a little bit too see-through. Here's the new version. Even Paul hasn't seen this yet. It'll be going off in the post to him tomorrow, but you're going to get a sneak preview. We've got a, a window frame to demonstrate it in here. The glass fits securely into the frame, just like so. Two little shutters to go over the front. And the question, of course, you're all asking is, can it be penetrated in the same way the old material was? Let's give it a bash. Firstly, through one section of the glass, then through the second section of the glass. Can it be done on the other side, they say? Well, here we go. Straight through, and straight through again. Penetrating the glass from all four sides. And if we take away the shutters, you can see the glass absolutely solid. I think that should be marvellous for the next set of patio doors. And so, back to the studio. Great. My favourite. A lovely cup of hot tomato soup. Ooh. Oh, uh, welcome back. Uh, well, one thing a room like this needs is a focal point. Perhaps even a talking point. Oh! 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 Oh, dear. Hey, Paul, the... Hey! What's this all over the wall? Well, there you are. A talking point. Well, let's go over to our helpful hotline and answer some of your very own DIY problems. Talking point? Smells more like tomato soup to me. Hey, Paul! Wait! Well, <laughs> we're here now at Chuckle Vision's very own hotline to answer your problems. Oh, it is hot, isn't it? Yes, uh, as I was saying, I'm about to pick up the phone and answer your very own do-it-yourself problems. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Um, well, uh, as you can see, the phone is very busy at the moment, so uh, I'll answer one of two of your letters instead. Now, uh, this letter comes from a gentleman asking, can I lower the lighting in my lounge without buying an expensive dimmer control? Well, I think this is one for the McChuckle Brothers. Yeah. Aye, you see, you can lower the light in, you see. Aye. Aye. Well, can you see if you see? If you can, can you see? Aye, you lower the light now, you can you see? And you, it's a problem, you see. Aye, you can and you can. Aye, and the neeps and tatties are all the... Aye, see, aye. Oh, hi, lower the light in, aye, aye, see, see. Can, aye, see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> and uh, this letter asks, how can I lay a patio? Get a big chicken. Yes, get a bigger chicken, yeah. <laughs> I wonder why this phone's not working. You mean the new cordless phone? No, no, this phone on the desk. That's the one I mean. I cut the cord off to make it more trendy. Eh? Hey? Yeah. Good, oh. innit? <laughs> right, um, well, let's go back to Chuckle Vision Show House and see how to get the best out of painting. Yeah. Painting. As you can see, these bare plaster walls look a bit drab. And the taste of tomato soup. Yes. So what is required is some careful colour coordination. I've got the paint. Oh, great. Now, when the surfaces are prepared, all that's left to do is to put the paint on the walls. Right. right. <laughs> Here we go. Um, as you can see, this is going to take quite some time, so in the meantime, Fred Chuckle Fred has a word for those of you who are thinking of replacing your chimney. Down. Great. Okay. Well, as you can see, while you've been away, we've finished the painting. Yep. And I'm sure you'll agree, we've done a pretty fine job. Great. Hey, fabulous. <laughs> but... You've got the wrong colour. Hey, I tell you what, though. Well, it grows on you. Do you think so? Yes, I quite like it, really. Do you? Yeah. I think so. Good. Uh, well, let's carry on, and I'll show you how to lay the carpet. Lay the carpet. Lay the carpet. I got... hey. How about that? That's very nice. Do you like it? Yeah. I got it from Doug the Rug. Oh, Dan the Vans, mate. That's right, yeah. yeah. Now, as you've probably noticed, it doesn't quite reach the wall. But don't worry about this. We'll show you how to remedy it. Right. Barry, go on. Just okay. watch this. Very easy. That's it. That's fine. That's it. Simple, eh? And an added little side effect, you get a bigger garden as well. A bigger garden? Yes. Great, because I love gardening. I know you do. Yeah. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Bye. Bye. Come on. OK. 
Tecu. Adiós ya.